first in high definition from the station on your side. This is Wavy News 10. A hostage ordeal is over, but the ending came with a mysterious twist. Well, Newport News police still don't know where that hostage is or if there ever was one. And this was breaking news at midday today when it all began shortly after 11 o'clock this morning at the Robert W. Lawrence Law Offices. That's at the intersection of Thimble Shoals and Cannon Boulevards. Ten on your side's Katie Collette is there right now. So, Katie, if the hostage situation is over, how do police know where the victim is. Well, you know, Alvita, they're certainly looking for a lot of things right now. Number one, where is the victim? Number two, was there ever really a hostage in the first place and where could he be? One thing we know for sure, when the SWAT team went inside this building around three o'clock this afternoon, no one was there. 1110 this morning is when all of this began. What initially occurred was the hostage, who is a male, um, text some information to an individual and that's eventually how police were notified that there was a possible hostage situation at this location. Officer Holly McPherson says a hostage negotiator tried for several hours to reach the suspect inside the law offices of Robert Lawrence but had no luck. Meanwhile, family members of those in nearby businesses started showing up. I'm extremely stressed out right now. Joshua McClellan's wife called to tell him there was a hostage situation in the building next to hers. She said they closed the blinds on the building so nobody can see out or in. What his wife couldn't see, Joshua could. He watched as the Newport News SWAT team made its move into the building around 3 o'clock. McPherson says the team checked all rooms, but they did not locate a hostage or a suspect. McPherson says police working to determine several things. First and most important, we are looking for the hostage, yes. We want to know where he is, of course. Second, did a crime actually happen here? Do you think that he is, in fact, a hostage? We had to look at all avenues, and that being one of them. Now police work every angle to solve this crime, if it was, in fact, a crime at all. Crime scene is um, responding as well as our major crimes. Um, we have to, just in case that he was kidnapped, we have to, you know, investigate the scene, collect any possible evidence. Now, McPherson says police are also working with the victim's family to try and determine where he is. Live in Newport News, Katie Collette, 10 on your side. All right, thanks a lot, Katie. Portsmouth police are now searching for the gunman who shot two men. Detectives say the victims were leaving a house on Richmond Avenue around 11 last night when it happened. Rescue crews took both men to the hospital. They are listed in stable condition. A man drowned in a Cape Charles pond. The medical examiner says that there is no reason to suspect foul play in the death of 31-year-old Terrell Evans, also known as Tootie. Evans was reported missing on March the 6th. His body was found last Wednesday near Bahama Road. Getting ready for a storm. On your knees. On your knees. Try to face the wall. Ten on your side went to Campostella Elementary in Norfolk for Tornado Preparedness Day. It's where students went through a tornado drill. This is 9.45 a.m. when the principal announced the drill over the intercom and the kids crouched down and covered their heads. And our goal is to make sure that our students are armed with the correct information in case of catastrophic weather such as a tornado takes place. Uh, ultimately, this information should transcend to the homes and our parents and grandparents will receive this information. Children have a wealth of knowledge and we're using them today to make sure that they're prepared as well as their families. Good reason to take this seriously. 51 tornadoes hit Virginia last year. Three people died and dozens more were hurt. When a tornado hit Gloucester back on April 16, 10 on your side's Ali Lucia just returned from one of the neighborhoods hit the hardest. And Allie, there are still signs of damage, aren't there? Yeah, Tom, today we saw a lot of abandoned homes and some that needed to be fixed. While a lot has changed since I last visited in the fall, a lot of work still needs to be done. And homes like this one still in need of a lot of repair. I was told by a neighbor the family is still living in a hotel and may not be able to get back into their home. In other parts of this neighborhood, just off 17 near Hickory Fork Road, signs of the storm still linger, like debris you see here, trees down. Still a lot of damage in the area. And we met Catherine Lopez, who says she lived in a hotel while her home was repaired. The roof was damaged, and the side of the house, a tree came through, and it pushed three of the walls out, basically. So how long were you? Five and a half months in a hotel. Yeah, my two dogs had to stay with a friend. 
Catherine told me she is glad to be back in her home. Her two dogs were staying with a friend, and now she has those two dogs back, too. Now, coming up at 6 o'clock, uh, we'll talk about the tornado that hit at Page Middle School. I visited there this afternoon, the new Page Middle School, that is, and there's been a lot of change there for students and staff, and I'll have more on that tonight at 6. Ali Lucia, 10 on your side. And of course, we're on your side. As you prepare for possible tornadoes, go to the weather tab on wavy.com. You'll find how to conduct your own tornado drill and an interactive display of those tornado safety tips. Also, see coverage of last year's tornadoes and that 2008 storm that hit Suffolk. We're at the start of a beautiful and bountiful crab season. Watermen are catching them by the bushels. They have the warmer weather to thank for that, too. The problem is, though, processing plants are having trouble finding workers to handle the harvest. Today, your side, Ava Hurdle is following the story live tonight in Hampton. Wow, Ava. Alvita, one local processor told me he hopes to get extra workers next month, but he needs people right now. Bushel after bushel after bushel of nothing but blue crabs lined the dock at Graham and Rollins in Hampton. Warm temperatures coupled with warm seas help create the plentiful harvest. Ten times more crabs than I have workforce to get it done. He has about a tenth of the more than 100 people he'd like to have on hand. A few are in training and then there's this. I'm in a labor program with the government uh, that allows me to bring some workers in here after I've exhausted all my efforts locally to try to find workers. And they're allowed to come in here starting April 1st. Meantime, at the marketplace, the price of crabs has gone down $20 or more a bushel from last year, according to Dimitri Hionis, who owns a seafood market in Virginia Beach. Somebody pay $30 a bushel, somebody pay $40 a bushel, but the average is between $20 to $40 a bushel. And what does that mean for the consumer? Well, it's good for them, but it's not good for the fishermen. Mark, you figure if they all catch their limit of 52 bushels, you know, how many crabs is that? A lot. It's a concern for commercial crabber Chuck Gregory, who's been doing this more than 30 years in and around the Lynn Haven River in Virginia Beach. For him, it's a season off to a bustling start. Graham and Rollins expects to hire more local people within the next few days. We're live in Hampton tonight. Ava Hurdle, 10 on your side. Now we go to Mexico for a developing story there, a strong earthquake that struck a short time ago. During the 7.4 magnitude quake, a pedestrian bridge collapsed and buildings swayed in Mexico City. Here's the first view of that damage right now. There are no reports of serious destruction or injuries. Frightened workers and residents poured into the streets when that quake hit. And President Barack Obama's oldest daughter is on vacation with a school group in southwestern Mexico. The White House says she's safe, and the 13-year-old was never in any danger during that earthquake. And now, a message from President Obama on the Iranian New Year. To the people of Iran, this holiday comes at a time of continued tension between our two countries. But as people gather with their families, do good deeds, and welcome a new season, we're also reminded of the common humanity that we share. There is no reason for the United States and Iran to be divided from one another. Now, moments after the president's message of solidarity, Iran's top leader, Ayatollah Ali Khomeini, said that Tehran will retaliate against an attack from Israeli or American forces on, quote, the same level. Iran has threatened to close the Straits of Hormuz in retaliation for efforts to stop its nuclear program. The Straits are the route for about a fifth of the world's oil. Iran insists its nuclear program is for peaceful purposes and says it is not pursuing a bomb. Virginia Beach parents upset tonight. Their children could be going to a new school in the fall. Tonight at 530, why the school board might decide to move hundreds of elementary school students. Pink slime. Fast food restaurants use it, and so do school cafeterias. Now, schools have the option to take that meat filler off the menu. Ten on your side, check with some local districts. Find out if your kids could be eating this next year. And on this Tornado Preparedness Day in the Commonwealth, we do have a twister caught on tape in Texas. See what happened when it touched down. 
a look at our area. Most of us have escaped any form of rain whatsoever. There are some scattered showers and even a couple of rumbles of thunder right on the western edge, southwestern edge of Franklin in the southeastern Southampton County. We'll update that. The rest of the rainfall for you in just a couple of minutes. Stay with us. This is a statewide ban on outdoor burning. The Virginia Department of Forestry says it's against the law to burn anything before 4 p.m. if the fire is within 300 feet of woods, brush, or fields containing dry grass or other flammable materials. The ban is in effect until April the 30th. And this is Divine Texas, where a tornado hit Monday. That's been confirmed by the National Weather Service. It was all part of a storm system that brought in heavy rain and hail, and one woman claimed she saw three funnel clouds. And here's what people in San Antonio saw at first light. Dozens of homes destroyed and five people with injuries. The sheriff's office took more than 300 calls during this storm, which also took away electricity from thousands. Several flights in and out of Dallas were delayed or canceled. 100-foot tall trees crashed down on a California home, killing an eight-year-old girl. It happened Sunday in Arnold, south of Sacramento. The second grader was sleeping in her bed when the pine, big pine tree came falling down during a wind and snowstorm. Firefighters say it took them 20 minutes to get to the scene because they had to maneuver through several inches of unplowed snow. No one else inside the home was hurt. Well, even though he was summoned, a Massachusetts resident has a good excuse for why he can't serve on a jury. He's not even old enough to vote. So why was he called? We'll tell you. The official name is Lean Finely Textured Beef. Well, you've come to know it as Pink Slime, and it's on the menu in your child's lunchroom. But next year, it doesn't have to be. Ted on your side wanted to know what local schools are getting rid of it. We'll tell you what we found out. You're watching Wavy News 10 at 5 with Tom Shad, Nicole Libus, and Super Doppler 10 Chief Meteorologist Don Slater. This story has a lot of people talking. Local school cafeterias are getting a choice when it comes to what's called, you may have heard this, pink slime. The USDA says it will offer ground beef that has not been treated with ammonium hydroxide to the National School Lunch Program in the fall. But as 10 on your side, Melanie Woodrow reports, the choice will ultimately be up to the schools. Melanie. I'll be done, Tom. Money could be a factor in the decision and whether or not this is what's served in local cafeterias. A representative with the Virginia Department of Agriculture and Consumer Services told me that as of right now, beef that has not been treated will cost as much as 3% more. So far, only Hampton School says they'll opt for the pricier ammonium hydroxide free beef. It's not easy being pink. After headlines broke that the National School Lunch Program included ground beef treated with ammonium hydroxide, the USDA said it would offer more choices. In a statement on its website, the USDA says, quote, USDA only purchases products for the school lunch program that are safe, nutritious, and affordable, including all products containing lean, finely textured beef. Lean finely textured beef, or LFTB, is what the USDA prefers to call what others are calling pink slime. Interestingly enough, the USDA, which declares meat safe, is the same government agency charged with promoting meat to the public, so there's always been a conflict of interest there. Dan Matthews is senior vice president of PETA, People for the Ethical Treatment of Animals. PETA advocates a vegan lifestyle that does not include consumption of animal products. Matthew says he recognizes not everyone chooses that lifestyle. Still, he worries about the meat supply in schools and elsewhere. Although pink slime is in the news now, there is fecal matter contaminating much of the nation's meat supply. The ammonium hydroxide is in part used to kill any bacteria. A spokesperson for Virginia Beach, Chesapeake and Norfolk schools said they'll look into any options. A Newport News school spokesperson said they're waiting for more research on the issue and that their order was already in for next school year. The USDA says all food purchased for the National School Lunch Program meets stringent food safety standards. There's a lot of things that have been around that we've been consuming for a long time, but we learn about the ill effects of some of these things and we stop it. 
So again, only Hampton schools said that they have already decided to opt out of what's being called lean, finely textured beef, what we are calling pink slime. A Virginia Department of Agriculture spokesperson told me that beef that has not been treated with ammonium hydroxide will become the default option for the schools in the fall. However, the schools will be able to choose to keep this beef if they want, and at least as of right now, this option is less costly. We're still waiting to hear back from Suffolk and Portsmouth schools. When we do, we'll let you know. Melanie Woodrow, 10 on your side. And this first day of spring, here's how it started down there in the corner. It's what Hampton Roads woke up to. Hard to see there. Yeah, for, yeah, for a <laughs> long time it was. The fog forced some drivers to slow down. Some school systems started late. But when the fog cleared, ooh, baby, it was a beautiful day. And there's no better place for all the signs of spring than the Norfolk Botanical Garden. Isn't that pretty? It's gorgeous out there. All those flowers, and there's, you know, it's mighty early to see the blossoms and flowers in the trees, too. A lot of things are happening early. We got, you know, crabs out earlier. We got flowers <laughs> out earlier. Yeah, and, and oh boy, we didn't know what I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk about, uh, as long as you're talking about that. We're going to see that heavy duty pollen that we get every oh, year. Oh, nice. Oh, uh, that's the green our early stuff. Food. Where the car uh, turns oh, yeah. yellow. Yeah, where know? the cars turn kind of a yellowish Debbie green Downer. color. That's <laughs> starting to pop out already because, uh, also because the, that's mainly pine pollen, and the pine. Uh, trees are really blossoming with that, and we'll really, really start to see that coming up. But we are going to see some rain occasionally, especially as we move toward the weekend. Uh, that'll wash some of that pollen away. Here's what's going on right now: most of us not seeing any rainfall uh, if, into the area, but again, we are seeing some, especially toward the Franklin area. You can see all the action on off uh, to the west: showers and thunderstorms, well off to the west of our part of the world. Uh, so again, we're not going to worry about that. Nothing real, real big uh, for us whatsoever. There are some thunderstorm warnings off to the south, off to the west, but nowhere uh, within the wavy TV viewing area. Now, we take a look at what's going on. We are seeing a little bit of a pop-up one uh, over Suffolk right now. You can see some scattered showers, uh, thunderstorms to the uh, southwest mainly of Franklin. And right now, those showers and thunderstorms are basically dropping southward or south-southeastward. I'm going to slide it around a bit uh, so you can see, again, over Delaware and Davis Corner and Sunbeam, seeing some of these scattered showers and thunderstorms and south of downtown Suffolk. There is downtown Suffolk, uh, kind of right underneath that little border there uh, where it says Super Doppler 10 uh, Live. Uh, right here, there's downtown Suffolk from Baker Crossing. Southward, we are seeing some scattered thunderstorms that have just started to develop there. Nine lightning strikes in the past five minutes out of this particular area. A little more widespread today across northeast North Carolina. Zero for lightning strikes uh, into uh, Hertford County, also into Chihuahua County, and toward the Elizabeth City area, we're seeing a dying area right here just south of Elizabeth City, south of town. But again, nothing big, no warnings. Warnings are way out off to the west, so we're not real, real likely to see that uh, during the evening hours. In fact, it will tend to die off once we get towards sunset. But we're going to see fog again overnight tonight into tomorrow morning. Light southeasterly winds at 5 to 10 at 9 o'clock this evening. Here's where we are 2 o'clock in the morning. Stray shower possible, but nothing very, very big. Here's where we are tomorrow during the day. Southerly wind at 5 to 10. Again, a stray shower uh, during the day tomorrow. Sunshine and cloud cover. A little breeze at 3 o'clock in the afternoon. A few thunderstorms off to the west. Here's where we are at the end of the day. And then finally, we move on into Thursday. Thursday morning at 7. Lots of cloud cover, but a little less of a chance of rainfall uh, during the day coming up on Thursday. And temperatures will continue to warm. Now, we have been watching for fog. We have seen a little bit of fog every now and then. Pushing in, uh, pushing inland off of the Atlantic. We're uh, we're looking eastward uh, toward Virginia Beach, and again, we're not seeing any fog quite yet uh, for the uh, uh, most of the region. But again, some patchy fog already into Virginia Beach. 68, 69, but then 75, 77 degrees farther inland uh, for the day today. Look at that, 69, then 77 in Suffolk. Get to Wakefield, and it's 78 degrees. We saw highs today again inland near 80 degrees. Well, it's not going to be that much different coming up for tomorrow. It'll be in the upper 60s, near 70, near the water's edge tomorrow. Uh, but uh, again, near 80 farther inland, just a slight chance of rain. 78 on Thursday, 80 on Friday, and then comes the weekend, and we're looking at a chance of some rain. Beautiful. A bittersweet battle is brewing. Why sugar is taking high fructose corn syrup to court. And dozens went to Cape Hatteras today. This has nothing to do with the first day of spring. Why they're protesting new rules by the National Park Service that's at 530.
But a Massachusetts resident received a summons for jury duty. He had one question. I said, what's jury duty? Yeah, how did nine-year-old Jacob Clark get called for jury duty? The state's jury commissioner says that census records indicate he was born in 1982 instead of 2002. That would make him 30 instead of nine. It could have been a data entry error at the town. It could have been um, the. It could have been on the census form that the parents fill out. By the way, this isn't the first time that Jacob was called for jury duty. He first got summoned when he was two years old. Wow. <laughs> A sweet battle is heading to a Los Angeles courtroom. Sugar is suing high fructose corn syrup. We're going to explain this. In the lawsuit before a judge tomorrow, the sugar industry accuses the corn industry of false advertising. You see, high fructose corn syrup promotes, promoters say the liquid sweetener is, quote, nutritionally the same as table sugar and claim, quote, your body cannot tell the difference. Now, sugar producers argue that high fructose corn syrup is not natural and is linked to higher obesity rates. The goal of the sugar suit is to get the campaign stopped and the Corn Association to pay up. A teacher stops a plot to kill students inside a Virginia elementary school. Next at 530, how she discovered the plan and who police have in custody. A four-year-old is crushed and killed by a television. What the little girl was doing before the accident and how you can prevent the same thing from happening in your home. A TV set fell on top of a four-year-old Wisconsin girl and killed her. It happened Sunday in this Milwaukee home. The girl's mother says that her daughter climbed on top of a dresser to change the channel when the television came crashing down. The Consumer Product Safety Commission says between 2000 and 2010, falling TVs injured more than 19,000 people. 169 young children died. Controversy over elementary schools in Virginia Beach.